Kickers, I'm Nick. Uh, unexpectedly, we actually have to tear apart the Cougar QBX because we need the gear for another uh, thing I can't talk about until a little bit later in the week that you're gonna see, but uh, you'll see why we need this hardware. Well, mainly it's the motherboard that I need from this. Yeah, so we're gonna tear this apart, I'm gonna have a little chat about the QBX, uh, attempt to answer some questions from the top of my head that you guys asked about the build video and all the Hackintosh stuff. Yeah, uh, let's uh, get into it and tear down the Cougar QBX. Why did I have an accent at the end? The QBX is a pretty easy case to build in. I've already taken out uh, the screws that hold on the side panels because I usually leave them out basically because I'm always pulling stuff out of these QBX builds that I do for other projects and adding stuff and testing stuff. And yeah, I don't know, that's just all I did. Now, cable management is actually pretty good for an ITX case, I think anyway. People will always disagree with everything I say on the internet because yeah. And the other thing is a lot of people are really lazy when it comes to cable management. So they will say that it's hard when if you just spend an extra five minutes, it's really easy. And you also notice that whenever I do these builds, I never plug in like front panel USB, all this stuff, basically because I want the build to be easy to tear down and uh, I don't really ever use front panel stuff on any system ever, so there's just no need for it, in, even in a practical sense. Obviously, the only machines that I do use this stuff on is my personal workstations because sometimes I'll be like, doing like a USB flash drive and like in, like for a, a bootable USB or something and it just makes it easier. But yeah, for most of the other PCs that I have, I don't really do that. And obviously if I'm building PCs for other people, I will plug all that stuff in because yeah, not everyone has the same use case as I do. And I think in the build, I said that I wasn't going to install a fan on the top panel when the reality was I ended up doing it. And all the 120 mil fans that I used on this ended up being the NZXT ones because I just had them on hand at the time and they just kind of, they're nice fans and they're PWM and they're not DC powered. So they're quite nice. They're elegant. They're pretty quiet. I just like them. Don't at me, bro. These are actually off an X72 AIO, not the 73 or the Z73. I just had these from the AIO that's in my current gaming computer because I got like RGB fans in that one and these weren't being used. And yeah, these little ITX systems just don't need RGB. There's no need for that. Ain't nobody got time for RGB in a computer that you can't even see inside of. Doesn't make a lot of sense. Absolutely bore you to death with the worst teardown video of all time. Okay, let's move on by getting the AIO out. Now, a lot of people actually said to me in the comments, you should Dremel this stuff out and then like make it more open and blah, blah, blah. I didn't want to mutilate this case. That's the honest truth. I have the other older QBX, which I'm going to be mutilating. I'm going to be doing a really cool mod with that one. But for this one, I want to keep it uh, pretty stock. And that one's a bit uh, manky as it is because it's got like a scratch on the front panel and it's not as clean. And I'm, I think what I want to do with the other one is I want to paint it and do some crazy modifications to it. One of the things I want to try and do is cut this out and then make a 280 mil rad be able to fit on it. That'd be something that I haven't seen anyone do yet. Well, there's probably someone that's done it, but I just haven't seen it. Let's be honest, I'm not paying attention. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> right, let's get all of this out and unplugged and out of the way. It's a very easy ITX case to work on. Probably one of the easiest ones. Out comes the GPU now. I had a lot, a lot of questions about the GPU in this build. A lot, a lot of questions. And it was mainly to do with uh, clearance between here and the GPU itself. I answered a lot of them in the video anyway, but as far as a three slot card fitting, I have got the Aorus Extreme 2080 Ti to fit in here. And that's like a 
two and a half slot, but you can't put fans underneath it. You do really need to look up the measurements of the GPUs that you want to use in this case, if you want it to fit. Length is usually not a problem. Say for instance, you have one of the Seasonic power supplies that are semi-modular, you shouldn't have a problem with length as well, because the other QBX I have has a, a, a proper um, ATX sized power supply, not one of the S these SFX ones. But just make sure that you research what fits. And I say that in every build video, in every tutorial, in every how-to guide, you really do have to make sure that you can look up the measurements on the manufacturer's websites for all the parts. Because if you do go there, they will tell you how big all of this stuff is. And if you ask in the comments, I might not know the answer, but yeah, you can find that stuff out just by using your old friend, Dr. Google. Pretty straightforward to find out measurements of hardware. Every manufacturer will always have the measurements of everything, so you know you can make a fit. Uh, yeah, like, like I mentioned in the build as well, you can fit most small power supplies, but once again, look up the measurements on the QBX website for the exact size that you can fit. I would suggest getting an SFX power supply with an adapter plate. It just makes it a lot easier. You can fit a lot more and it is my recommended way of going about installing this. It just makes it nicer. You can have a proper compact system and you can get SFX power supplies that are rated quite high in wattage. So you shouldn't have problems with running most hardware in these things. And besides that, like look at the size of the computer. It's not like you're gonna use a lot of gear that's gonna pull all of the power from the socket and I mean, if they made an ITX uh, motherboard for a Threadripper, which is never gonna be possible, uh, and you put a 3990X in it, then you know, maybe worry about the wattage. But otherwise, yeah, just don't worry about it. I would recommend going SFX with an adapter bracket just like that. It just makes a lot more sense. The cables are shorter too, so they're easier to cable manage and yeah, it's the right way to do it. I installed an 80 mil fan up the front. I'm not a huge fan of this one. <laughs> I mean, it's not a huge fan, but I don't really like it. It's a bit loud for my taste and 80 mil fans are generally loud. They always have been for the many, many years that I've used them. They actually used to be the standard case fan size back in the day. And then when 120 mil fans came out, it was like, wow, these things are huge. And now we've got 200 mil fans and we're like, wow, these things are huge. <laughs> but yeah, I'm gonna pull this one out, not leave it in there because uh, for the next build I do with this, well, I don't know what I'm gonna do with it next. I don't know, let's be honest. But I, I don't want a loud one to be in there for the next time we, uh, we use this case. Because I think what I'm probably going to do is possibly cutting out on the other one, obviously, cutting it out and then see if we can jam a bigger fan in the front. Probably a 120 mil. We could probably do it pretty easily. I've seen people making the whole front of these mesh, which is kind of cool. A little bit too much effort, if I'm honest, mainly because I don't have a workshop to do this stuff. And these other 120 mil low profile fans, I'm gonna pull them out because I don't need, I don't need them in here at the moment. And I possibly have another use for them, for something that we're putting together at the moment. Probably gonna be a multi-part series, which is not something we usually do on the channel, but you guys are gonna enjoy it because a lot of you have been asking us to do something similar, but it's not going to be something that is not going to be permanent, if that makes sense. It's, going, it's a new permanent fixture for gear seekers, and it involves a lot of work it's something we have done before, like not on this channel, but it's something that we have a lot of experience in from a past life. And we decided that it was time to do it, show you how it's done basically. And it's kind of, it's a weird flex, let's be honest. And it involves me. And it involves Claire. And it's actually Claire's project. It's not nothing to do really with me. The project is Claire's baby and it's gonna be really cool. I'm excited for it. It's something we've been trying to do for ages. We haven't had the space in our house to do it, but we made space. We 
<laughs> That's why we've, our uploads have been quite like sporadic over the last week or two. It's because we've been planning this project and we've been doing other stuff, but I'll show you. of our QBX Hackintosh. Now there's a really, really uh, good reason for the teardown to occur, but I, unfortunately we just can't talk about it. Uh, <laughs> but I, I'm gonna just say this, you guys are gonna be really excited about it when you see what we, we're doing with the hardware later on in the week. But also adding to that as well, I also talked about something else that we've been working on in the background, which is kind of the reason why we haven't been uploading as much. Should I spill the beans? I should, because I, they got to this part of the video then, you know, real MVPs. Okay, well, we have a room in our house that we typically use it for like storage and it used to be my old office. It's this tiny little nook of a room and I basically could fit my computer desk or a smaller version of my current setup. And yeah, it's got like ethernet and everything in this room. It's a cool miniature office. So what Claire and I have decided to do is turning into a permanent streaming setup. So we're in the process of uh, building PCs for it and doing all that stuff. Obviously you're gonna see the PCs that we're building and everything for this streaming setup. We're gonna do a full stream setup tour and how we are actually streaming like with every single part of detail. So there's gonna be a multi-part series. This thing is gonna be bonkers. I've been waiting to do this for so long. And yesterday, like the weather, it's been raining like crazy here in Sydney. We didn't have a lot to do yesterday. And like, we'd already been planning this for ages and we were just like, let's just start moving everything and get, st get started basically. So we spent our entire day yesterday organizing all of the logistical part of it, like actually moving stuff to make it happen. The other time we've spent is like, okay, this is what we want to do. And then like sending emails and just getting everything rolling, but I'm keen. I'm keen and it's not, it's not for me either, it's for Claire. So Claire's gonna be streaming on our Twitch channel. So what you should do is go and follow us on Twitch right now so you can have all of that stuff sorted out now. Uh, I'll put a link to our Twitch. Obviously it's just twitch.tv forward slash gearseekers. But yeah, uh, that's basically what we've been working on in the, in the background. So there's a lot of other cool stuff. But like I said, the hardware for this, that came out of this is for something else really cool that we can't actually talk about. But yeah, if you guys haven't seen the original build video for this, in fact, I'll just make a playlist of all of our QBX videos just in case you're interested. I'll chuck that up there for all those who are interested in that. And if you like the music you heard here, I make all of the music. Yes, it's me. Uh, yeah, Patreon, that's how you can get it. And soon to be on Floatplane. And yeah, is that everything? PC part picker list for the original build. Uh, any other questions? Anything else I forgot? I don't know, it's been a couple of days since we made a video, so I forgot how to do it. How do we make videos? I don't know how to do it anymore. I don't know, I don't make a video for like two days and then I just forget how everything works. <laughs> anyway, guys, if you liked the video, please like and subscribe. Uh, consider hitting the join button to support the channel or joining us on Floatplane. If you didn't like this video, you know what to do and tell us what you hated about it. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. I forgot what to do. Say the thing. Oh yeah, okay, you peek. We seek. I'm really keen for the streaming setup. A lot of planning has gone into this thing. It's been an ongoing saga for so long. And it's finally, finally happening. Are you keen, Claire? Oh, yeah. Claire's going to be streaming The Sims. I'm going to be reviewing pictures of your dogs and cats. Yes. Please send cat pics. I tried to not make that sound rude. <laughs> yeah.
thanks for watching. I guess.